uh, taking like a walking tour of the old town of Sarajevo. My first impression is Sarajevo really does remind me of Turkey. And then I had found out from our tour guide, his name is Asim, that the Turks or the Ottomans had actually colonized Bosnia for over 400 years. So, which is why, you know, we are given Turkish delight and a lot of similarities basically like the time when I was in Turkey. Speaking of Turkey, like this mosque over here, this is pretty much like at the center of the old town. It's it's almost like a symbol and the most monumental um, structure here in the old town and basically in Sarajevo. Now this fountain over here, so I'm learning, I think it, with all religions, it's cleanliness is next to godliness. So true. So they're like this gentleman over here. What he's doing is he's cleaning himself. So before they pray, I'm, I apologize if I get this wrong, but I'm only trying to remember what we were told. So first you start off with your hands and then you go with your mouth. I'm guessing you, you drink some or you wash your mouth and then you wash your face and then you wash your ears, then the top of your head, your nape, up to your elbows, from your hands to your elbows, and including your feet. Because I do believe that when you pray, you should offer yourself as, as clean as you can when kneeling before your God. And the space where you pray should also be just as clean. See, I just learned that today. shopping street there's so many shops local handicrafts you know your your fake goods your fake Gucci's Louis Vuitton's copper goods souvenir items silk scarves really 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 busy and we were told you know just with any tourist destination you got to be careful with your belongings because there are some naughty little fingers there okay now since Sarajevo is like a trade city as you can see like everything's like shopping there's a, a you know an industrial part so all these little streets in the old town connect like just one big shopping area and now we're walking towards the coppersmith street where Asim was telling us that he does want us to try like Bosnia coffee it does look similar to Turkish coffee but no he made sure to tell us it's not the same so I've actually learned basically what makes Bosnian coffee so unique is because when it's served, it's basically a set. It comes with like the, the thing that pours in and then it has like the um, container for the sugar or the Turkish delight. And it has two cups, which is usually meant to be served at least in two for friendship. Very nice. So if you can actually see there's two cups here, there's two cups there. And at the bottom, there's even more and more cups. So it basically, it really is about, it's kind of like, you know, buying like a set of, of cutlery, you know, you have for a table of eight, of two, of four, of six, of, of so on and so forth. And that applies to coffee. And when you buy these things, there's actually the, um, what do you call it, inscription, where they engrave like the name of the artist. So you know that what you're getting is of great quality. We're here now in Medjugorje. I was actually expecting it to be just, you know, a very small quaint town that's just filled with a lot of people who come to pray and, you know, try and experience of how sacred the miracle happened here. But then, <laughs> it's very commercialized. Many shops all over not that it's a bad thing it's just that it's not really what i was expecting well then again it kind of is like the vatican it kind of is like 
so many other places that something you know miraculous has happened there and when people come when tourists come where do you get what do you get loads of tourists so many souvenir stores from rosaries to baby bibs to like outfits for the priest well of course food <laughs> there's pretty much everything Love that just passed by a pub called Tesla Tesla pub only the greatest inventor of all time if you guys do not know who he is look it up Nikola Tesla so we learned that Sarajevo is actually like the European Babylon or European Jerusalem and that basically means like you have all like all these different um, religions all coming together like right behind me you have the Russian Orthodox earlier we came from the mosque and then uh, I don't know if we're gonna be visiting a Jewish synagogue and then there is also of course a Catholic Church so this is the Catholic Church or cathedral but that is Pope John Paul II that's actually quite nice what time is it I think it's about like 8 p.m. and it's quite busy here it's like a, I'm guessing it's like a church square it is a very nice thing to do the walking tour everything was relatively quick easy to understand easy to walk people are actually quite friendly it's nice I like it so we're walking, this is the main shopping street, like the main street of it all. It's so different from the old town where the streets are smaller. I was kind of nervous to bust out my phone. And here, so many tourists, so many people, lovely. So that sign over there, it says Sarajevo meeting of cultures and it basically means where that line divides or at least it's a demarcation between a facing of east and west where it's Istanbul and Austro-Hungarian where you know the architecture here on my left side is more European and that is more like Istanbul, Ottoman style. Wow, didn't know that. Well now you know. So earlier I was saying, you know, that's the East, this is the West, sorry everyone, meeting of cultures. Now let's say you're going to part ways and you don't really know where to go. So where should we go? East, West, Sarajevo or Europe? Why do we spin? And it's perfect because we really want to go West because we're going to go shopping. So bye guys. Following day. Top of the morning to you guys. I'm on my way to the Cadavanes. Oh God, I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> And um, basically, it's that beautiful area that's like enclosed with a beautiful tree inside. And then there's all like these coffee tables and carpets and all these beautiful fabrics. And I'm going to have some traditional Bosnian coffee. So this is that area that I was talking to you about. We were here just yesterday. So you see that tree right in the middle? I learned that that is what you call the, with the use of passive engineering where you actually use nature as a part of your construction. So of course, what does a tree do? Well, of course, other than providing oxygen, it also provides shade. And that's why when you enter this place, despite the heat outside, it's actually quite cool. And you see that entrance right there. It's actually a very small opening, so it concentrates all the air, providing this draft, almost like an air con, right when you enter. Now this place back in the day was used like horses would be stored here. It was sort of like um, they would do a lot of trading in here as well, as well. And the traders would actually find shelter in places like this. So another part of passive engineering. So a lot of horses, I guess, were, I don't want to say parked, but um, left here for the night. And because of their body heat, that provided insulation as well, especially in the colder months. So that's quite interesting. But today I'm gonna be having some Bosnian coffee. Okay, so I'm having my coffee fix. This is the Bosnian coffee. So I was saying in the tour that um, Turkish coffee, you know you can have it by yourself. At least what we were taught in Bosnian coffee, it's meant to be 
be shared. It's meant as a bonding experience. So my daughter and actually are going to have some coffee. And then on the copper cup, you have your sugar cubes and Turkish delight, which is like a really very very sweet kind of like jelly dessert. Yeah, very concentrated. <coughs> And then, let's do a close-up. Okay. There we go. I hope I don't burn myself. <laughs> It is very, 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 very strong. <laughs> strong. But I like, that is how I like my coffee. Dark, bold, deep roast. Um, it almost has like a cocoa feel to it because it has a bigger consistency. That's it. <laughs> So now I'm kind of like, you know, just a few steps underneath. And this is like their own version of the Grand Bazaar. It's actually, the structure is from a combination of old and new, where it was the ancient ruins of their former caravan, caravan something. <laughs> so it was a very, very, very big one. And of course, what do you find? You know, there's a lot of fake goods, souvenir items fur, bags, um, everything that you can think of. It's not very big, it's just like one long row underneath. You can go through and through. And you will end up on one side at Hotel Europe, which is the very first and one of three luxury hotels in Sarajevo. <laughs> so that was the Grand Bazaar, and this is Hotel Europe. Take a look at the here. So these are the ancient ruins that I was talking about. All this. It's actually quite nice at night because it's lit up. It's a mix of modern and new. And that is where we're going to be having our dinner. So that was super cool. So that guy, basically, we caught him right on time. He had jumped from the bridge and everybody was just cheering for him. <laughs> and then over there in the far off side, there, there he is. He's actually practicing in a smaller scale. And then eventually, when he gets good enough, he's gonna jump from here. I wanna do that. That would be super fun. <laughs> So basically this point really is the main attraction here in this really beautiful small town. It's actually nice that you know there's so many restaurants, pretty much every restaurant that has a balcony has a great view of the water. All the different colors of the buildings, of the chairs, against the greenery. Uh, despite how hot it is, it really is such a beautiful summer day. It's so tricky to walk down these things and hold a selfie stick at this spot. <laughs> You know, when something is so old, like rocks, a pathway, or a statue, you can tell if it's been rubbed or walked on for so many times when it becomes really shiny and slippery. And that's exactly what's happening here. Okay, so the small town of Mostar. It's a popular tourist attraction in Bosnia because it is really near the border. Unlike going to the Sarajevo city proper, it's actually way further, a couple of hours further. So this is the nearest place to go to, especially when they do a quick travel coming from Croatia. And I don't know my geography, but I'm guessing other neighboring countries. And But still, it is so beautiful. And speaking of beautiful, all these pastel houses I saw from across the bridge, here they are. It is so hot that I'm so close to buying an ice cream cone and I think I just, I just might. And it would be so great right now to have it on such a hot day. Two scoops. Of course. Of course. 
is the first and one of three five-star hotels in Sarajevo. It's called Hotel Europe and we're going to be having dinner at Viennese Cafe. Now on the other side where the old town was, you know it's more of the eastern influences so there, there was a lot of Ottoman flavors and cultures and whatnot and here it's more of the Austrian-Hungarian, hence the name of Viennese Cafe. I do have to admit I am yearning to be eating here because we were told that um, it's quite hard to find seafood here. Meat is really the one thing they, they offer the most because if it were fish, it's either really expensive or very hard to find, especially in this area. Um, it's either gonna be frozen or whatnot. So meat is the one thing that they do recommend. However, thank goodness that they actually have fish here and I'll be able to have something to eat. So, here we go. Well, we arrived really, really late. It's like almost 10 p.m. That's why there's really no one here. And uh, everybody's probably hitting the bars for a couple of drinks. But we're here for one thing. World Cup. 